Hey everyone, thanks for being patient. We will get going here with National League Player of the Week, Josh Fuentes. If you have a question for Josh, raise, raise your hand and we will get started as soon as possible. Danielle Allentuck, go ahead and start us off. Hey Josh, congratulations on being Player of the Week. Um, just was kind of, what was your reaction to finding that out? Um, actually, uh, Corey was the first one to tell me, um, and I was, I was definitely shocked. Um, I wasn't expecting to win it, but, uh, it, it was a goal of mine coming into the season, uh, to, to win player of the week. So I saw that and I was very, very, um, uh, excited and very humbled. And, this, and we've talked through a few a couple times this past week, um, but just what has it been like for everything to just kind of come together for you all at once? Yeah, it, it, you know, it's nice knowing that your hard work pays off and, and to know that, you know, my failures uh, in April um, amounted to something, you know, because I feel like you always have to learn from your failures. But, uh, you know, it, it, it feels nice. But the thing about baseball is it's such a long season. You can't, you know, you know we have a game today. You know, we're playing you daughters. So, um, yeah, it's great. And I'm, you know, I have a lot of people texting me, my family and all that stuff, and I'm definitely going to cherish this. But at the same time, it's like, you know, the next day you got to go back to work. So, you know, I'm excited to, uh, to, to try to back it up and, and see if I can do it again. <laughs> right. Um, and this team has been having some trouble on the road. Um, what do you think has been the issue? Has it been frustrating for all of you? Um, yeah, of course. You know, you look, I mean, we don't, like to look at those numbers too much, you know, we know what it is, but you know, it, it's tough. It's tough coming from course, um, you know, coming to the sea level, you know, we, I feel like we always go to San Diego or San Fran after course and, and that's tough. You know, the, the sliders, they spin more and the fastballs are, they're up and, and guys, um, you know, it's, it's tough getting used to, but you know, it's something we, you know, it is what it is. You know, we come from course, we gotta, we gotta play hard and win these games. So, um, you know, we definitely notice it. We, we notice our struggles, but, um, you know, I think it's just, it's just grinding and, and we've been playing bit better baseball lately, hitting the ball better. So, you know, hopefully this, uh, this road trip uh, turns around. Thank you. All right, we'll go to Thomas Harding. Thomas, go ahead. Yes, Josh, if you can kind of um, put in the words, what, what were the biggest adjustments um, that, that you felt got you better? Yeah, I, I think is just sticking to my, my normal approach up the middle. Um, I feel like I was getting a little too pool happy um, in my previous weeks. And this week, I just wanted to focus up the middle and stay on the baseball. So I think for me, um, it's that simple approach. It's not really, you know, too mechanical, but uh, it's just sticking that approach and sticking up the middle and just worried about hitting the ball hard, not worried about, uh, you know, what he's throwing, what he's got, what I'm hitting or any of that. Just hit the ball hard up the middle. Um, and and uh, that seemed to work. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yesterday was obviously a strange day, and I'm uh, I'm sure one you probably don't want to relive very often. But what was the mood after that? Um, obviously, you guys had a chance to win a series. Uh, didn't quite work out for you. What was the mood there? And um, what was that? Was that a tough one to get over, or is it just you know you you just have to, and you don't really kind of rate the losses as this one's really bad. Yeah. I think immediately after the game, um, the guys feel it. You know, the guys knew, especially because we were in control of that game, you know, up until the eighth inning. And uh, and a lot of us felt like we were going to win that series, um, especially going to the eighth pretty easily, and and it didn't work out. So, you know, immediately after the game, I, I think guys felt it for sure. Um, guys, are, guys are pretty pissed off, and I feel like, you know, it, that's a game where you look back and, and you figure out, you know, how can we learn from this? How can we get better so it doesn't happen again? But I think – you know, today it's a new day. It's a new series. Um, yesterday's over with. So we got you, Dar you Darvish today and, and we can't be thinking about what happened yesterday. Yeah. They, you know, the last couple of games, I mean, obviously, you know, all the headlines yesterday were about the bullpen. I guess the, um, the headlines the night before were kind of about the offense. So d does it, d does it feel like, um, I guess one thing goes well and one thing doesn't, is that kind of the frustrating part of it so far? Yeah, you know, the the best teams in the league, you know, they get it done both ways. And and right now it seems like we're every other game kind of <laughs> kind of doing the opposite. But 
but yeah, you know, you know, we notice it. We notice that, uh, you know, we got to put together and, and that's what great teams do. do. And we're striving to be a, a great team. And there's no doubt about that. Um, you know, whether, whatever the scores are and whatever, what happens, um, we, we are striving to be a great team. So um, that's just something that you have to overcome. And I think it, it, it just takes individually every guy to kind of dig deep and say, Hey, you know, what do I need to do to get better? And I think, uh, I think a lot of guys are on board with that, but, um, but at the end of the day, you know, we got to have results. You know, uh, in, in baseball, hot streaks are going to come, cold streaks are going to come. But do you, how much does maybe the last week that you had kind of reinforce you that you can get out of a cold streak? Um, yeah, it, it's huge. And, you know, I've dealt with that in my early career. You know, I've started slow and I was like, am I ever going to get out of this? And, and, and I usually do. So it definitely feels nice to have that in, you know, the big league setting of, hey, you know, I had a really – really bad April, but I was able to make adjustments and, and that gives you confidence knowing that, Hey, no matter what I can get out of it. So that was huge. And to get out of it, um, the way I did, um, is, it means everything to me, but, uh, but yeah, you just got to keep going. All right. We'll go to Patrick Saunders. Sorry, Thomas. We'll circle back to you. If we still have questions, Patrick, go ahead. Hi, Josh. Congratulations on the award. That's, that's, that's pretty cool. Thank you. Um, Speaking of the text from your family, did you get a text from your, a certain cousin? <laughs> um, yeah, we, we had a little group text going, and uh, and yeah, they were they were congratulating me and all that stuff. But you know, Nolan, Nolan had a really good week too. I think he had like three, four homers in a row, so that was sick. But just, just, just yeah, I, but you were be- <laughs> but, but you were better, right? So what are you going to do? Yeah, he he just got out done. You know, that's just the way it goes. But. Uh, <laughs> But obviously, uh, yeah, you know, he texted me. He, he was he was really happy for me. That's really cool. You mentioned to Danielle the need to start producing offensively on the road. And this is nothing new. It's historic that the Rockies have had this, this struggle. Uh, what in your mind, not just for you, but for the team, when you go to a San Diego or a D- L.A. or a San Francisco after being at Coors, is there something you guys can really do to produce some more offense? Cause it's, it's too much to ask, like ask a ball player to totally change who he is, mm-hmm. but what are the things you guys can do to, to produce enough runs to win on the road? Yeah, I, I think it's not so much ball flight, you know, I, the, the Coors effect or whatever, I, I think is kind of bogus to be honest with you, but um, you, know, you know, people say what they want to say, but I think for us, it, it's the pitches, you know, the, it, it's just so much sharper in sea level, um, especially nowadays, you know, every guy's got 3000 spin rates. So it, it's just, it's sharper. The fastball has got a little more life and the curveballs break more. So it, I think for us, it, it's just getting used to that. You know, it's, it's getting early and seeing machine and seeing that break and, and it's knowing that it's going to break more and uh, adjusting to that. And I think that's, you know, no other team deals with that. I feel like except for us. So, you know, we have uh, our work cut out for us, but you know, it's something that I think we're starting to notice and we're starting to be like, Hey, you know, maybe we'll do more machine and, and do that spin rate to, to see it. So, you know, you, the first time you don't see it is in the game, but, um, but other than that, I, I think, you know, it, it's just, you got to get out there and play, man. You know, it, it is what it is. You, you got to know that it's going to break hard and you got to know that that spin's coming. Um, you Thomas asked you about essentially about the mood of the team. And you said, yes, frustrated, but now we're over it. Um, You guys have told us ever since spring training that this is a very tight knit group of players. You guys are forming a really good bond, but when you lose heartbreaking games like that, and you guys have lost a lot of one and two run games this year, is that starting to take its toll on that camaraderie, that feeling, or do you think you guys are still, you know, bound together? Um, uh, I, it's definitely not taking a toll. Um, I think we're just upset at the result, you know, not so much individually because, you know, it's baseball and man, everyone fails and, and everyone has hiccups and everyone screws up and, you know, people blow saves, people strike out with bases loaded. Um, you know, it happens. And I think once you start kind of getting guys individually, um, I think that's when it crumbles, but that that's definitely not us, man. We, we have to pick each other up. And I think, um, our, our core guys, you know, Mac, Treb, Free, um, guys in the bullpen, Barda, I think they know that the only way for us to, to get out of this is to stick together. Cool. And one more for me. 
Uh, I think we're supposed to talk to Connor Joe here in a minute. Um, he's had a, a heck of a run too. Uh, what kind of energy, what kind of impact has he had since he got more playing time when CJ went on the IL and now Adams is on the IL too? What, from your vantage point, what is he per- – what has he provided you guys? Yeah, well, from what I see, I see a guy who, who loves to play, a guy who's got a pretty good swing, and uh, someone he's always smiling, man. Joe's <laughs> – and his smile is hilarious with his, with his big mullet. Um, <laughs> but, but not even, you know, the fact that his energy – obviously, you know, um, we come up as a rookie and just like I was, you know, you want to have a lot of energy and you want to play, but – you know, he's a good ball player too. And, uh, and I think that's the most important part is the guy can swing it. He's got a great eye. Um, and he, he wants to win he wants to work hard. So you, know, you see that with him, you know, he's bounced around a couple of teams and, and he's no, he knows how to grind. I feel like we got a few guys on our team like that, but, um, but most importantly, I, I think he's a good ball player. Great. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. All right. Got to go quickly here. Josh and go get on MLB network. We'll go to Kevin Henry and then finish with that one. Kevin, go ahead. Hey, Josh, quick question. Uh, So let's talk about one of those moments of joy. I think whenever you guys get on base, it's the knock celebration. Is that what Rymax said? Um, Yeah, it's a Daza and Trejo came up with a, it's a, yeah, a little little base knock. Okay. All right. So a lot of pictures of you have had the two up. Is it, is it basically single, double, you get the two knock then or? Yeah, the the doubles, the, the, the two and the triple, we haven't really come up with anything yet. Um, I, when Hampson's the only one that's been hitting triples, so we'll have to get on that. Yeah, but the double is double knock for doubles. It, and can you just talk about what that means? I mean, just those moments when you can kind of celebrate with your teammates even though they're not right there with you. Yeah, I, I think two things. One, um, it's it, it you know hitting is is really hard in the big leagues, um, especially now. You know, hitting is very very hard. So when you get a base hit. Um, I'm all for celebrating it. Um, I know sometimes, you know, I'll like kind of flip my bat and that's not anything disrespectful. It's just, I'm excited. I got a hit. It's really hard. So I, I love the celebrations, um, you know, giving it to the team, you know, everyone's kind of involved and everyone's excited. You just got a hit. And when you look at the dugout and everyone's giving you the knockback, it, it feels really good. And, and you want to chase that feeling. So it, I think that's why uh, most teams kind of incorporate that. All right, man. Thanks. Appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, all right. We'll finish up with Owen. Owen, go ahead. Hey, Joshua, I got a few quick ones here. Are you still going with Joshua? I think you said you were changing your name. <laughs> My name is Joshua Luis, yes. Okay. <laughs> um, well, could you just talk about the range of emotions you went through this week, um, starting off, you know, coming out of St. Louis and taking a couple games off and then finishing, like, you know, the way the week wrapped up for you? Yeah, that's um, that's kind of been the, the buzz around the clubhouse. It's like, wow, Josh had a unbelievable 180. <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah, you know, it was – it, it, I finally just, uh, I, you know, I kind of mentioned this before, but yeah, I finally just kind of let it go and, and just wanted to play baseball and have fun again. Um, and, uh, and yeah, that kind of changed my whole outlook, to be honest, you know, even, uh, even now the other day I struck out and I was like, whatever, I'll get him next time, you know? And, and that, I think definitely for me, that has to be the attitude. So yeah, that was crazy. That was uh, a big roller coaster. I think from now on, I would like to keep it pretty steady, but, uh, but yeah, that, that, that was awesome. The team certainly seems to be playing better. Um, and a lot of that, I think, is is players with less experience. Um, do you see something happening with those guys who have less experience? And, you know, you you may be part of that. Um, you may be on the cusp. But, um, you know, some of that, that less experienced group that's sort of finding themselves right now. Yeah, I, I definitely feel a part of that. Um, I still feel like I'm a, I'm a baby in the big leagues. But, yeah, you know, me, um, Daza, uh, Nooney. I mean, these guys were, were, were finally getting, you know, real opportunities to, to kind of showcase our talents. And I think, you know, that's what every baseball player needs, man. You need opportunities and confidence. And I think um, we're starting to go out and, and have some confidence. And I think, uh, you know, we're, it's obviously very early and uh, early in our careers. And, and I think, I think we, I truly believe that, you know, we have some, some really good players here, man. Um, but it just takes that confidence of, of the young guys getting some experience, failing, learning, and and also having success and being rewarded. And uh, and that's the only way to build that. And lastly, some of, um, you know, as the team gets healthy again, uh, you can probably anticipate some more competition uh, for playing time and even roster spots. Um, are you looking forward to that collectively, you know, to have that internal competition 
coming up yeah. as people come back? Hundred percent. I mean, we have Freeland come back. Obviously, B Rod. I mean, I mean, B Rod's a great player, man, and he can help us. And and I think, you know, obviously everyone wants to play, but you know, you know, you have to play well to play. And you know, there's no gimmies here. You know, Story and Chuck are the only guys are, and maybe Tap our pencil in every day for a reason. Those guys are the best. But all of us, you know, we're and we're grinding against each other to to play because. You know, that's what we want to do. But still at the same time, you know, B-Rod's still one of my best friends. And, and Hampson and Mac, they're, they're my best buddies. So I think I think it's good, healthy competition. You know, we push each other for sure. All right. Thank you. All right. I think that's all the questions we have. Thank you, Josh. Appreciate your time. Everyone with Connor here, Patrick Saunders, wants to start us off. Hey, Connor, not, not to start off with a negative, but I do have to ask you, when Rymac hit the, the ball to center field yesterday, and he didn't score. Did you just hold up for a minute because you thought there was a chance that it was going to be caught? I assume that's what happened. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, it was a tough read. Uh, Ryan hit that ball extremely hard and extremely well. And I've seen balls that he's hit um, in, in the past few games stay up like that and get caught. Um, so, yeah, as my job, I mean, in that situation, um, with one out, um, if I were to end, end the game and he would have caught that ball, then that would have been, you know, terrible. Um, so I, I gave it a, a pause just to make sure it wasn't getting caught. And at that time I wasn't able to score. Um, I've been thinking about that play a lot and uh, yeah, not um, would have wish I, I scored on that play. The follow-up question to that, because you're new, relatively new to Coors Field in balls of Coors, let's face it, they fly differently than they do in other places. Is that taking some getting used to both? Uh, I know you haven't played much outfield out there, but just getting used to how the ball reacts as opposed to say when you were in San Francisco or any of those things, is that one of the adjustments a young player in Denver has to, to make and get used to? Yeah, I definitely think um, it plays a part in uh, being in Denver. Um, the ball does stay up a little bit longer. Um, it does carry more. Um, you know, I haven't gotten to shag as many balls as I've had, you know, would have wanted to during BP just because of weather and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, just seeing balls that I think should be, um, you know, hits are, are staying up and getting caught. And dramatically switching gears here. And I know you've talked a little bit about this. Uh, what you went through health-wise with the testicular cancer. Uh, can you can you share with us, uh, how did it change your outlook as a ball player? In other words, I know that's a big question, but did it, did it take pressure off you? Did it uh, tell you, you know what, I'm going to go all out every game, every play, not waste a spare moment? I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I'm just curious how that affected you as a ball player? Yeah, um, I think it played a lot of different parts. Um, it, it really changed my mentality, you know, um, going through that and having that kind of scare um, puts everything into perspective. Um, I love baseball. I'm passionate about baseball. And at the end of the day, it's, I realize it's a game. Um, you know, I work really hard at it and I, I want to win every night. Um, but I think going through something like a life-changing um experience like I did um, really made me realize, um, you know, what's important in life. Um, baseball is extremely important to me. And I don't want you to get that, you know, skewed or anything like that. But, um, you know, I'm really enjoying my time out in the field, um, having a lot of fun, enjoying every moment. And um, that, that's what it's helped me do. Excellent. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, Patrick. All right, we'll go to Danielle. Hey, Connor, um, San Diego native. I mean, you played at Petco before, I believe, back when you were with the Giants. But um, what's it just like coming back here now as the Rockies when you've been playing so well? Yeah, it's awesome. Um, coming back this time is a little bit different. You know, I have uh, back when I was with the Giants, it was my debut. Um, there was a lot of anticipation, um, a, a little bit of anxiety coming in and um, debuting in my hometown. But, um, you know, I feel really good coming in this time, you know, in the plane, looking out the window and seeing uh, the Coronado Bridge, it felt right. Um, 
I had a really good, you know, spring training and I got comfortable with the guys and the staff and um, have built up a little bit of momentum coming in this series. So um, I'm excited about it. Um, it definitely feels different this time. And um, I, I'm looking forward to the series. Did you grow up going to games there? Were you a Padres fan when you were younger? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I went to uh, grew up going to Qualcomm. And then uh, when they made the uh, change to Petco Park, I was here. And um, it's funny in fact that it was actually uh, Buddy Black managing the team when I was younger as well. That's pretty cool. Um, have you told him that? Um, I, I believe he knows. Uh, we, we talked about it in the offseason, but um, yeah, I might sneak it in there today, too. <laughs> okay. Um, I saw you out there the other day um, working with CJ Cron, um, and I know he's not you know, fully able to do everything, um, but what's it been like working with him? Have you like picked his brain at all about playing first base and some of the things he's learned throughout his career? Yeah, Crony's been awesome. Um, I, I got to work really closely with him in spring training, um, obviously being in the first baseman group and um, just around him in the cage, working him work, uh, watching him work is it's awesome. He's helped me a lot, um, especially with the hitting approach and, um, you know, kind of how he goes about his business and, and specific things he looks for in opposing pitchers. So, um, yeah, Crony's been amazing and, and it's really helped me and um, I, I really appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. All right, we'll go to Thomas Hardy. Thomas, go ahead. Yeah, Connor. Um, not often. A lot of times when you come up, you do bat low in the order, and you did. And then next thing you know, you're up there batting second in the order. What does that say about your approach? I mean, you, you've you obviously drawn the walks and done things like that. What does that say about your approach and the things you've been working on ever since you were um, in the majors with the Giants? Um, I don't really know what it says exactly about my approach. I think, um, you know, the team appreciates me getting on base and that's what I've been doing lately. So, um, you know, anywhere I hit in the lineup, I'm, um, doing my best to help the team obviously, but, um, I like hitting in the two spot. I like, uh, you know, being surrounded by, by great hitters. That helps me a lot. And, um, you know, just having fun getting on base, producing, uh, runs any way I can. And, uh, just just getting on base to create some traffic is is really nice. During your minor league career, um, where did, where were you most comfortable hitting, or where did you hit uh, most often when, uh, when you know when when the season got going and people settled into their spots? Yeah, I've hit uh, almost everywhere in the lineup. I've hit you know middle lineup from like uh, five and six. I've hit three um, in 2018 and 19 with the Dodgers. I actually hit leadoff, um, which is crazy because I don't necessarily consider myself a speed guy. Um, but yeah, I think I, when I'm going well, I'm, I'm getting on base a lot, uh, whether it's via hits or uh, walks. So um, I'm comfortable hitting anywhere. And, um, you know, wherever the team puts me, I'm, I'm happy to be. A couple of things um, about San Diego. How much family do you have with you there tonight? Uh, there'll, be, there'll be a good amount of people um, in the fans uh, tonight, which I'm happy about. Oh, that's good. Do you have an idea on how many? Oh man, I, I want to say probably around uh, 20 people, honestly. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> not to, um, not, you know, not to be negative, but I, I think right around the time uh, that the season started, you lost your grandmother and um, you, you, you got to go and visit and, and, and be with the family there, I guess that, 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 that had to be tough, but um, so do you carry some of her with you out there? Always, always, you know, um, yeah, that was extremely hard um, times, but, um, you know, keeping her uh, with me in my heart, knowing that she's looking down on me, um, I'm doing everything I can to make her proud, so, yeah. All right, all right. Hey, Connor, thank you so much for that, man. Yeah, thank you. We will go to Mark Stout, at t Mark, go ahead. Yeah, hey, Connor, thanks. Um, so, real quick, who were your Padres growing up? Do you remember the, the 98 World Series team? Um, I don't specifically remember the team, but um, okay. I remember watching them play uh, play the Yankees. Yeah, I mean that's you. You were way young. When when did you? What players did you start liking? Like when you were old enough to go like those are my guys. By far, favorite Padre is uh, Tony Gwynn, um, and then followed following him is uh, obviously Trevor Hoffman and uh, Ken Caminiti. Awesome. That's all I needed. Thanks, man. Yeah, yeah absolutely. A few more. We'll go to Kyle Newman, Kevin Henry, and we'll finish up with that one. Kyle, go ahead. 
Hey, Connor. So before the cancer, I mean, what was the most challenging part about your minor league journey and just, you know, any, any travails that you endured before that cancer scare? Um, I wouldn't really call it, you know, trials or tribulations in the minor leagues. It was um, just learning a routine and a, a process that worked for me. You know, it's, uh, it's one of those things. Some guys get drafted and go straight to the big leagues and some guys, um, have to work things out in the, in the minor leagues. And I was one of those guys. Um, I, I never really felt like there was major setbacks in the minor leagues for me. Um, it was kind of just, um, continuing, I guess, pushing the rock up the hill and, um, finding success little by little and stacking those, uh, successes and, um, you know, breaking in. And then one final one for me, Connor, out. Uh when you look forward to here the rest of the season, do you have any, you know, concrete, tangible goals of where you want to be or what you want to accomplish by September? Man, I'm, uh, I'm taking this thing day by day, honestly, um, trying to help the team uh, win every night and um, be the best version of myself, honestly. Thank you. Yeah. Kevin Henry. Hey, Connor, two questions for me. Uh, number one, one of the things that stands out so much is your smile whenever you're out there. <laughs> Do you just, have you always played with that much joy or is this something you've really discovered in the last couple of years? Honestly, it's not something that I've done my whole career. Um, I've taken this game extremely seriously uh, and I still do. Um, but I realize this game is extremely tough. Um, I was one that would always focus on the negatives, um, take the negatives from the game and dwell on those. Um, and I think it has a lot to do with what I've been through the last year um, and realizing this game is really tough and um, we got to celebrate when we, when we have success in this game, um, you know, personally and as a team. And um, it's made the game a lot more fun um, for me and uh, I'm, I'm loving it. I'm having a great time. And speaking of celebration, I, I asked Josh about the base knock celebration. And just what does that mean for you guys to be able to celebrate those individual moments out there? Man, I'm having so much fun. And like seeing my teammates have success is, is just as much fun as if I'm getting the hit. Um, you know, to be able to celebrate and, and bring us together, you know, if, even if it's just a silly um, thing like that celebration we do, it's, it's great. You know, we're all pulling for each other. We're all um, wanting – success for each other and it's it's going to build and uh become something special thanks man i appreciate yeah, it absolutely all right i want to go ahead um hey connor i think you um spent a, a half you know a handful of innings in the outfield uh, the other day um and you alluded to not having as much prep time as you'd like um what are you doing these days other than at first base are you are you spending time in the outfield when you can um or anywhere else on the diamond yeah, absolutely. I'm jumping out to, uh, you know, the outfield and getting reads. Um, and, and when I referred to not being able to get as many as I wanted, it's just because of the, uh, the weather and, um, you know, batting practice getting canceled and stuff like that. But um, no, I'm definitely getting reads on the outfield, um, working hard at first base. And um, that's, that's what's been asked of me uh, this far. So. And I think Bud was serious when he said you were the emergency catcher. Are you ready uh, to jump in? To absolutely. That role at any time? Absolutely. Um, yeah, it's something I've always kind of had in my back pocket. Um, I caught in, in college for my last year there and um, throughout my career in the minor leagues, I haven't caught a game, but I've been active catching bullpens and uh, working on that. So I, I definitely am ready for that. All right. And a couple more. Um, I think this is your sixth team, uh, sixth or organization. Um, is there anything, you know, about I know it's limited time with the Rockies so far, but that stands out to you having seen a bunch of different organizations, anything about the Rockies that stands out separate from the others? Um, I think the staff, the veterans, um, they do a really good job of welcoming, you know, rookies, um, young guys, um, and allowing us to be ourselves. And I think that goes a long way. Um, not feeling uncomfortable um, being myself and going out there being who I am and um, playing the game with freedom. So I, I think that goes a long way with um, helping guys perform. Yeah. And lastly, regarding um, the health scare from last year, mm -hmm. um, you know, did you ever consider the fact that you might not be able to play the game again? And, you know, if you, I don't want to make too much 
um, of a speculation, but if you weren't playing, uh, what do you think you'd be doing if you couldn't be playing right now? Yeah. Um, when I was going through all the treatments, uh, baseball wasn't really on my mind. You know, I was focused on getting healthy. Um, it, it did cross my mind where I was, there was uncertainty of if I would ever play. Um, but I, I think I've said it before and in my heart, I knew I would, uh, overcome it and, um, get back on the field. So I had a good feeling, um, about everything and, you know, God willing, and I'm out here, which is, which is amazing. Yeah. And just, I mean, if you, if you just didn't have baseball, you have any sense of what else you'd be doing if you weren't playing baseball? Oh man, I, I've never given that any thought, honestly. Um, it's always been baseball. It's what I'm passionate about. It's what I love doing. And, um, you know, hopefully not have to cross that bridge for, for a long time. Um, no, I don't, I don't have an idea. That's cool. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right, Thomas, one follow up. Yes. Um, when you were hitting this winter and Bud Black was throwing you BP, mm -hmm. what's that like, uh, but obviously you're trying to get ready for a season, but it had to cross your mind. Gee, I need to impress this guy that I've been watching manage. And now he's going to be my manager. How, you know, how did you, how did you approach that? No, it wasn't like that at all, actually, Thomas. Um, you know, Bud's a great person. And um, it wasn't like a, uh, you know, I didn't feel like I had to impress anybody that day. Um, it was more so getting to know him, getting on, on the field, getting some great uh, BP and um, getting to know each other. So, um, yeah, I don't, I think Bud's an extremely approachable person. And, um, you know, he cared enough to get to know me and take the time during the winter when he didn't have to, um, to come out there. So I was grateful for that opportunity and, um, to, to start our relationship then. All right. So that was one day. Was it at the university of San Diego or was it at a facility? Oh, it was just like at a, a local high school. Okay, great. All right. Hey, thank you very much. Connor. Yeah. Thank you.